Jones, your old pal JP over, over your shoulder there. Uh, he's very much one of the stars of uh, As Good As It Gets. Uh, he's had its press screening now. Are you pleased how things have gone? I'm really pleased. And uh, in fact, I'm over, over the moon. And I almost started welling up right at the end when I saw the pictures of us on Abbey Fields, as we are now, post the 2015 victory and so many other journeys that we've been on ever since. And, you know, I love this walk to bits. And Kevin Simpson just over to my left there. And there's an old picture of me at the back. And these are people that I'll remember for the rest of my life and the experiences that we've had. And, you know, there's so many lessons to learn or to tell about what we've learned over the last 15, 20 years. That's so valuable to people in society, whether you're a sportsman or woman, you know, whether you're a postman, whether you're a solicitor. There's just an amazing wealth of experiences and journeys that we've been on. And uh, it's just amazing to be able to package that up in this amazing film film. You are officially the world's busiest man. <laughs> uh, how you found the last year uh, bringing this this particular baby to, to, to the world? It's been difficult, it's been really difficult, so I think I'm, I'm a trustee or a, a governor at every school and charity in West Leeds. I'm uh, currently doing a play. I've obviously tried to play a bit of rugby league on the weekend as well and put this story together, a dad of four boys and a lovely wife. And do you know what, Phil? It's all conducive to telling stories. I couldn't realise that I enjoy telling stories and I keep saying life's a narrative. And this is arguably the greatest story that I've ever been involved with. And uh, the characters within that were so humble, so selfless, so altruistic and benevolent that I wanted people to understand that that's the reason why we've been so successful. Yes, we've been great players. Yes, we've been sacrificial and worked hard on a training field. And we've had some skillful, talented young men. But actually, it's because of what's in here in the heart that they have uh, done so well. We could have gone off and you know done other things and probably been a lot more selfish and been successful elsewhere, but they chose to stick together to go on this fantastic journey and hopefully this will be an inspiration to uh, everybody that watches it. Uh, I couldn't help thinking when I was watching the film that this 2015 season, it's, it's, it just continues to live and breathe. It, you know, so many remarkable things, the treble itself and all the stories in the film, but then Kev goes on and begins to up in sports. Yeah. You've made a film that's in a cinema that 2,000 people are going to come and pay to watch this week yeah. and it's going to go on Amazon. This 2015 season just keeps on going. It keeps giving. And do you know what? It'll always keep giving as long as we keep talking about it. And do you know what, uh, Phil? I didn't know a great deal about the uh, 68 Water Splash final until the last sort of two years when I started to become a bit of a student of rugby league history and started to do plays. And I, you know, without, without getting too disappointed, I asked myself, why don't I know? Why have I never seen this sport in life? You know, there's, there's so many old stories as well in the archives that we could be living inspiration from, getting inspiration from that just aren't being told. And I love it when at Leeds Rhinos we do a lot of ex-players association dues. You know, Gary's always inviting players back to reunions and I hear these stories and if we want it to be a global sport, a national sport, we need to keep out there telling people what it's all about. Now 2015 was the zenith, the highlight of my career and uh, something happened in that year that, that made it the greatest sporting year of my life in that I got injured. It was the first time in 18 finals I couldn't play in the final but I wasn't left nor forsaken by my teammates, the club, yourself, Kevin Simfield, everybody involved with Leeds Rhinos kept me along in that journey. And that made it the best, most st spectacular story that I'd ever come across. And that's what really motivated, motivated me uh, to keep going with it, all the energy, despite all the busyness, and make sure that the people had the information they needed to make this film and we've done it. Speaking to Lee Hicken, the director of the film, he talked about how he, he never thought he could make a film as quickly as this, on a topic as, as big as this. Yeah. And that the, what was key was, was those interviews and how candid people were there. Yeah. You know, that's past and present players. You know, how, how, how big a question was that to ask of people? Well, I think the reason why I, um, I knew this could happen was because I'd seen a film called Do You Want to Win? It was about Leeds United, almost 12 months to the week that it got premiered here. And I thought we've got a great story. We've got players who would invest their time and energy into giving this. You know, it's not like getting all the Vinnie Jones or David Batty. This is Kevin Sinfield who I can give a, 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 a call. You know, Jamie Peacock who love and understand that we don't tell enough stories. And I keep repeating myself, but it's, it's so true. The Rugby League archive was more accessible. Leeds Rhinos Club, Gary Everton and yourself and the media people all bought into it. Um, we've got Kevin and, and Tommy Briscoe and all the lads that did some amazing things in 2015 who wanted to come and tell that story. Uh, my only downside to it, Phil, is there's a part of me that thinks there's so many more stories to tell in 2015. We could talk about Adam Cuthbertson and Mitch Garbert, you know, these unlikely lads from Australia like Bebop and Rocksteady come and have such a huge impact. We could talk about Tommy Bisco and his five tries and just do a full 40 minutes just on him, this unlikely lad from Featherstone. We could talk about um, Zach Hardick, I mean, 
Man of Steel that year. The first of that generation, the golden generation, to have got Man of Steel. We talk about 10 years of the Leeds Rhinos Foundation celebration dinner on 21st of October 2015, back to the future day. We talk about Kev, BBC Sports Person out here, and I could go on and on and on. Um, but there's only a limited amount of time and energy to be able to do that. And I'm just thankful that we've got the core of it down here in this film. And God willing, it'll go out on Amazon and people in China, in Canada, South America will be able to watch it and say, not have a clue what rubble league is, but this is a heck of a story. And you see, you're suggesting there, there's, there's plenty of stuff still in the can for the sequel. There certainly is, yeah. And we were talking to, um, to Lee Akin about what, what we could do next. And I think when people see this um, and uh, hopefully inspired by it, they'll get behind it. And do you know what, Phil? I don't mind saying Wigan obviously play a bit of an antagonist in this. They're almost like that pantomime rivalry that we've got across the other side of the Pennines. But I hope they see this film and think, do you know what? We've got a heck of an archive of history to be able to tell. Let's make our own film. Let's tell it the Wigan story to the world. And it's not just about Jim Jones Buchanan, not just about Jim Peacock Paul, Lee Drynos, it's about rugby league. That is what's important, rugby league, and hopefully we're just the start of a rugby league revival.